Hello everyone and welcome to a quick episode on how to edit wild Pokemon, where we're going to be showing off the new tool DSPRE. It's super simple to do, so let's just jump right into it. So first we'll open up the ROM in DSPRE. With this button here. I just grab a blank platinum ROM. Now your first goal is to locate the correct map header for the location you want to edit wild Pokemon on. Let's say Route 201 in my case. There's a handy search bar here. I can just type in 201, hit go, and there it is. And it's already selected here. So all the information that I need about Route 201 is over here on the right. Although just to be clear, these previews here on the far right always show Twin Leaf Town, no matter which headers you're looking at, just in case you're wondering why this is Twin Leaf over here. Now, if you want to confirm you're looking at the right header for the location you are looking for, you want to make note of the header number over here, which is uh, 342, and then use this button to jump to the matrix editor. Most headers will jump you here to matrix zero, which is the overworld. Now, first I want to jump to the map headers tab, switch to the header numbers, and based on the overworld, I know that route 201 should be right around here. And there it is, where we have 342 again. So now I can switch back over to the map files tab and then go to that same spot where now I have the same spot selected on both these tabs. Basically when these line up, that means that this map here is associated with this header. So if I come back to map 0005 and I double click on it, it'll open down here and I will see route 201. All right, so now that I know I have the right header, all I gotta do is come back here, look over here for wild Pokemon, and click Open Editor, which will open this window. Now, real quick, sometimes when you're opening up this editor, you'll see an error like this. And this just means that a part of the data was unreadable and will list each area that had an issue. This is normally caused by a bad ROM dump or by edits made in PPRE. But clicking OK will still open the editor, and the changes you make here in DSPRE should be able to correct those areas. So no worries, you'll still be able to edit your ROM. And once you edit the data that can't be read, this error will stop appearing. Where in my example screenshot here, I had an error with the super raw data. So thanks to this wording here, I knew where to look to fix the issue. Alright, so with that out of the way, we finally have the editor. Obviously this one has settings specific to Platinum's encounter mechanics, like the Poke Radar and the dual slots, this window will be slightly different based on which ROM you are editing. For example, here is the Heart Gold Soul Silver Wild Pokemon Editor. Pretty much the same thing, but laid out a little differently. Now, from here, it should be fairly straightforward to edit. First, in the upper right, you can set the encounter rate, which is basically how likely a Pokemon is to appear each time the player takes a step in the grass. Then, in these fields, you simply set which Pokemon you want for the appropriate encounter percent. Like 20, 10, 1%. Which basically means that when you meet a Pokemon in the grass, how likely is that Pokemon to be the one that you meet, and what level should it be at? For grass encounters, you set one level for each encounter slot. So if you want the same Pokemon to appear at varying levels, you need to list that Pokemon multiple times for each level you want. Like I see multiple Starlies at like level 2, level 3, and so on. The part that may take some explaining are these lower sections. Down here. The Pokemon down in these fields will replace the Pokemon listed up here in the walking section while the right conditions are met. For example, you have the time dependent section down here, where we have these two Pokemon listed for the day only, where if the player is playing between 10 a.m. and 8 p.m., these Pokemon will replace these Pokemon. Or here for night only, if the player is playing between 8 p.m. and 4 a.m., these Pokemon will replace these Pokemon. And that means that these two are the Pokemon for the morning between 4 a.m. and 10 a.m. And then over here, if they're doing uh, swarms in post-game, if there is a swarm, these Pokemon replace these. And then pretty simply here for the dual slot Pokemon, depending on which game is in the second slot, the two Pokemon for that game 
just replace the 4% Pokemon here. And then lastly, if the player is using the Poke Radar, these two 10% Pokemon replace the same 10% Pokemon here, and then these 1% Pokemon replace these Pokemon here. Now, of course, as I said, these are Platinum Catch mechanics, but I feel the Heart Gold Soul Silver Editor layout is a bit more immediately readable. The only fields I might need some explaining are that the music-based Pokemon in the upper right and the Grass Swarm Pokemon in the lower left will replace both the 20% Pokemon slots for a combined 40% chance when they are active. And then that the three Water-based Swarm Pokemon will replace the appropriate 60% chance slot on the Water tab when its Swarm is active. But okay, then moving back to the Platinum Editor, I also want to show the Water tab where you have one slot for each encounter percent, but then you can set a level range instead. Now, obviously Route 201 doesn't have any water, so there's nothing here. So for a visual example, I'll just scroll down to encounter file 142, where you can see what the data would look like. Where you can see for like the super rod, you got a 60% chance of getting the Gyarados level 40 with no range, or a 5% chance of getting a Gyarados that's over level 40, up to level 55. And that's really it. Now, if you're familiar with my custom ROM hack I've been showing off in my mapping and scripting videos, you may remember I replaced Route 201 with my own custom map that now has a pawn that looks like this. So I could list Pokemon here and encounter file 140 in that ROM, and then I would encounter those water Pokemon on my custom map along with the grass ones. But once you have these fields as you like them, you just click Save Encounters, close down the editor, and then you can save a new ROM with this button here. Like the wilds. And there it is. The one thing I want to mention is that since the encounter file is listed on the header, like this here, that means it can be used in multiple locations. Like if I jump back over here to the matrix editor, go back to the sub tab, and then look over here at the ocean, you can see that these locations use the same header, 399. Which means if I double click this header, each of those maps use encounter file 171. So if you edit this file, your change will affect all of these locations. I also want to mention editing locations that aren't on the matrix zero. For example, if I want to look up Mount Coronet and click header 208, like so, we can open the matrix and now we're on matrix 10, where this matrix doesn't have a matrix header sub tab so you can't see the same information. However, there is an easy rule of thumb to follow here, where any maps on Matrix 10 will use header 208. So then any changes you make to encounter file 11 will affect both of these maps, which you can still see which map these are if you double click them. Go back to the Matrix editor, like that. Just in case we were curious where these were. And this rule of thumb should be true for any maps that's not on Matrix Zero. If you scroll through, you see that none of these have that header sub tab. So whichever header opens that matrix is the header that these maps will use. So now that you know that some maps will use the same encounter file, some of you may be wondering what to do if you want to be able to list separate encounter files for each map instead. DSPRE is a new, very powerful tool that has some advanced options you can work with for this. Just be warned that if this is your first time editing, you may want to only attempt the basic edits that I've mentioned up to this point, just to get your feet wet before you dive into the deep end of the pool. Because these new advanced options are newer and don't have the same years of testing that the basic edits do. So even advanced hackers will want to be careful 
and take as many backups as possible to be safe for any unknown bugs. But okay, let's start with the Matrix Zero. And go back to one of these maps that uses header 399. I can just type 0172 into here and click off. And that will now change this map to use this header like these do. So effectively, I've just changed this map to use encounter file 4 instead of encounter file 171. However, what that also does is that it will also change the script file and event file. So you're going to want to be sure to have the knowledge of what all that changes before you start just swapping headers around. But if you know what you're doing, this can give you some more control over what Pokemon show up where. But I'm doing that here on the map headers tab. So some of you might be wondering, well, how do I do that? for maps that aren't on the Matrix Zero. Well, what you can do is if I come back to our friend Matrix 10 from before, there's some fancy buttons over here on the side, and one of those buttons is Add Header Tab. And with just the click, the ROM has now been expanded to add a Headers Tab to this. Though now these are just zero, so to prevent any errors, what you want to do is enter in the number of the header that's here. So this one came from 208, let's do the matrix, 10, good, okay. So 208 is the number that we want. So we just type in 0208 and 0208. Okay, so we can save the matrix. And this is now ready to go. And I can do the same kind of edits here as well. Where I can change these to any other header that I want. But like I said, swapping headers around can be complicated because it carries over all the other files that that header also uses. Which leads me into the biggest new option that this tool has. If you click this button here, you open up the ROM toolbox. This window holds a number of automatic processes that you can run on your ROM where a good number of them are some pretty powerful things you had to have a lot of knowledge to do that can now just be done for you. The one we want is right here. Dynamic Header Allocation. This will essentially shift data around in your ROM to allow you to add brand new headers. If you want to know how the data is shifted, this window will appear when you click the button with a list of what they are. I would say a rule of thumb for this one would be the more advanced of a hack you're trying to make, the more you'll want to pay attention to these changes. I recommend taking a screenshot of this window and storing it with your ROM hacking files for reference moving forward, just in case. As you can see, this feature is still in beta, and while it appears to fully function correctly, it's still brand new, and has not had a chance to be tested in the field for very long. So just make sure to make those backups if you're going to use this one. If you do find any issues, please either like leave a comment here or come by the Discord so we can discuss in more detail. But when you're ready, you can click yes. And you get this nice confirmation window and this green check mark. Show that it's applied. So I can close this window, come back to the header editor, and now these buttons down here are lit up. So I'll clear out my filter. Add a new header, and BAM! There is a new header. Where now you can list any encounter file you want, like let's say 127 for example. And then what I could do is take 593 here, put it, let's say back on matrix 0, on this one, which I didn't save my changes, that reverted back again. The number I wanted was 593, there we go. So I can put 0593, there we are, this time, save the matrix, there we go. So that should stay there, good. So now it uses that new header, then what I could do is make this a duplicate of the same information that's on header 
$3.99 right here for all the same information except for a different encounter file number. So it will still act the same, but then have a different list of Pokemon to pull from. And then on top of that, you could come here. You have to change this number for that button to light up. So just do 127 again. It's just a random number. Click off the field, then get the button. Open the editor. What we do here, there's also an add file on this window. So I make a brand new encounter file, which you can add it to the very bottom of this list here. Right there, new. Like so. And list any Pokemon that I want here. And also here. I'll just list Bulbasaur here. Level 5 as a placeholder. I can save it. Okay, good. Close this down. Enter 183. Then we open the editor. Just to make sure my changes took effect. There's Bulbasaur. And that the water tab is still empty. And that's it. So instead of having to edit an existing file, I can just add brand new ones, which is, again, very new to NDS hacking. Now I'm gonna sound like a broken record here, but I want you to be extra careful. Because again, most of these advanced options are fairly new, especially about adding new headers. Expanding the ROM has probably been one of the biggest steps for NDS hacking in quite a few years. And I want to do what I can to spread the word about these new powerful options, but I also feel responsible to make sure you guys are adequately warned to be careful with them, as there may still be unforeseen bugs we haven't come across yet. So if you run into any, leave a comment, come to the Discord, let us know. We have a specific DSPRE chat in the Discord you can report an issue in, where we can learn from it, and then hopefully down the road you can check for new versions that would have fixes for any bugs that were found. And of course, if you'd rather play it safe, the old tried and true method of repurposing existing files and moving them around as needed should still work fine. And okay, as always, I hope this has been helpful. This new version of DSPRE that actually just dropped today has been added to the tools folder. Right in here. And the fun fact for you is that actually just this morning, we noticed that the... Uh, well, Pokemon window here actually said morning only here instead of day only, which is kind of misleading for which Pokemon lined up at which time. So, so just this morning at Astra added that fix to a version they were already working on and put it out so I could record the video, which was immensely helpful. But all right, let me know if you have any questions on this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Good night, everybody.